For today's main topic, I'm going to be reacting to three advertisements from Experian featuring Taylor Swift's boyfriend, Travis Kelsey. You see, football season is back in full swing, and being in Kansas City, it's really hard to ignore anything that features the Chiefs. And last year for the Super Bowl, I remember seeing this advertisement. It reminded me of the Susie Orman documentary, which I had seen before last year's Super Bowl. And while I didn't do anything with my feelings at the time, it's relevant to bring it up now because this product is still being marketed through NFL material today. Let's watch and listen to the Experian Super Bowl ad together now. I know what you're thinking. Travis Kelsey is a lot like the new Experian Smart Money debit card. I was thinking that too, because it's cool. I gotta say the cinematics here of a slow-mo with Travis Kelsey flying through the air and light shining down from heaven is genuinely cool. With the digital checking account, it can build credit without the debt. And that right there is the main claim, a debit card connected to a digital bank account that can help you build credit without debt. History repeats itself and this ad is not alone. Here's a second one that was also featured last year in and around the Super Bowl. Travis Kelsey, two championship rings, seven consecutive thousand yard seasons. You're Brian Halsey, zero debt, perfect payment history. I worship you, man. You do? It's all the Experian Smart Money debit card. It has a digital checking account that can build credit without the debt. Okay, in the hypothetical universe where this advertisement exists, does Travis Kelsey know who this random person is and that they don't have any debt because Experian sold all his debit card information to Travis? He's mine for everything! Me too! No way! <laughs> oh, 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 man! I'll see you, man. Yeah, bye. The debit card that builds credit. Get your Experian Smart Money account through the free app. Okay, when I saw both of those advertisements for the first time, red flags shot up like fireworks because I had seen that Susie Orman documentary we just covered. I know what happened there as it was alleged in that documentary. And I know what's on FICO's website. A debit card transaction history has nothing to do with your credit score. It has nothing to do with the goals of Fair Isaac Corporation. And it's being advertised again this year. This advertisement at the time of recording is only a couple weeks old. Wait, Experian has a debit card? Yeah, it's the all-new Experian Smart Money debit card. Fumble! Travis Kelsey with his free championship rings fumbles the debit card. Tough break. With a digital checking account, it can build credit without the debt. It gives you early paycheck access. Is everyone fighting over the fumbled debit card in this ad because they're aware of just how much money is probably on that? Oh, and in a blink and you'll miss it moment, they claim again that you can build your credit without the debt. That's a nice hit. I love you. Then you can get 50 bucks for doing direct deposit. That's one smart card. Sorry. Build credit without the debt. Get yours today. Download the free Experian app now. All right, let's get that off the screen. I am not promoting that you go after this product. Okay, when it came to Susie Orman and her claim that the approved card was going to help build your credit score, she was working with TransUnion. And what we have here is Experian doing almost the same thing. Now, their bank account that's associated with this, I believe, is FDIC insured. In fact, there are references to the FDIC in the fine print at the bottom of that last advertisement. Now, remember at the end of the story, I asked you to think about how is this product generating revenue for the interested parties? How is Experian and the bank they're partnering up with making money here? Well, to answer that question, I've gone to the Experian website and found the page that advertises this digital card. If we scroll down, we can see that there's no monthly fees. There's a little asterisk there. I did look into the fees. That's nothing like the Susie Orman card. It says that the bank is FDIC insured here. Peace of mind up to a quarter million dollars. And if we keep scrolling, the first section says build credit without the debt. This section reads pay bills like your rent, utilities, and streaming services with your digital checking account and will find payments that could, could, instantly raise your credit score. There's a little asterisk there, and that leads to this section, and it reads, results will vary. Not all payments are boost eligible. Some users may not receive an improved score or approved odds. Not all lenders use Experian 
credit files, and not all lenders use scores impacted by Experian Boost. Experian Boost. Now, I've heard that before. I've heard that in previous Experian ads that were being played in NFL games in years past. It wasn't tied to a debit card back then. They just had Experian Boost through their app. Let's jump back into the website and click the Learn More under that disclaimer. That brings us to this page, the Experian Boost Disclosure. Check this out. Experian Boost results will vary. Not all rent, telecommunications, utilities, video streaming, internet, or insurance payments are Boost eligible. Generally, three or more eligible payments to qualify payee within six months with at least one such payment within three months are required to Boost. Bills paid quarterly or frequently, and health insurance are not eligible. Residential rent payments within certain amount range are required to boost with rent. Rent may not be boost eligible if third-party data furnisher has already provided any rent or mortgage data to your Experian credit file. Payments through peer-to-peer -peer payment services or by paper check are not eligible not all lenders use Experian credit files, and not all lenders use scores impacted by Experian Boost. And that right there, I think, is the biggest kicker, but let's finish the disclaimer before we jump into it. Some users may not receive an improved score or approved odds with Boost. Users who received a Boost improved their FICO score 8 from Experian by an average of 13 points. Isn't that Taylor Swift's favorite number? This to me is the biggest statement in the whole disclaimer. Most mortgage lenders do not consider credit scores impacted by boost. Terms and conditions subject to change. Okay, to reiterate in my own words, this debit card is simply connected to the Experian Boost program. It's giving your information for all transactions, all of your personal information directly to Experian so they can automatically apply information that may be applicable to their Boost program. A program that, according to that disclaimer, is not used by all lenders and is not used by most mortgage lenders. From that legalese, I'm assuming that Boost changes or modifies or tweaks your FICO 8 score a little bit given the average change of 13 points, and uses it as a different type of scoring system, which is no longer purely your credit score. Consider that this is coming from only one of the three bureaus, and a lender is probably going to be pulling more than one credit report if they're doing their due diligence on a very serious loan. And I think that's why most mortgage lenders are not considering this, because your debit card payments are simply not relevant to what FICO is trying to measure using your credit score. Now, a lot of that information I infer from this disclaimer, but there is a section of Experian's website that talks about Boost without the debit card that's tied to this. This is the Experian webpage that talks about Experian Boost separate from the card. It says, instantly raise your credit scores for free. If we scroll down, we can see that they're saying you pay your, your bills your subscription bills, and that gets tied to Experian Boost. There's some instructions here, one of which is to connect your bank account to Experian Boost. So they get all of the transactions going through your bank. Next, you select the bills that you want to use to try to boost your score using Experian Boost's modification of a FICO score. Then finally, you see your results and they give you a little bit of a positive. They're only going to increase your score. They're not going to use any of the information to negatively impact your score. You know, that's fine. But I do have a problem personally giving my personal information to a credit bureau if it's information that I could keep private. Let's go down here and see what the frequently asked questions are about. Education and advice. What is Experian Boost? Let's read their answer to what is Experian Boost. Experian Boost is an easy way for you to take control of your credit and build long-term credit health just by paying your bills. When you connect your bank account or credit card, we'll look for bills with positive history that you can add to your Experian credit file. It could also instantly raise your FICO score. 
I think it's interesting that in this particular section of the frequently asked questions, they don't say it's a modified version of the FICO score or a boost FICO score, just modifying your FICO score plainly. Let's look through some of these other questions. The one at the bottom is really interesting. Can Experian Boost help me if I have no credit history or no FICO score? Let's expand that and check it out. This reads, if you're just starting on your credit journey, that's okay. Experian Boost can still help you if you meet the minimum FICO requirements. You have at least one account on your credit report that has been active for at least six months. Now, credit report meaning it's a credit account, not a bank account that's tied to Experian Boost. This is a minimum requirement for a FICO score, not a minimum requirement for Experian Boost. Second, you have at least one account on your credit report that has been reported to a credit bureau within the last six months. You are not listed as deceased on your credit report. And if that is the case, the credit bureau providing your report might have you mixed up with another person. Lastly, if you check all these boxes, you can get your first FICO score and use Experian Boost. Well, how conveniently did they not answer the question other than simply circumventing the answer? No, Experian Boost is not going to help you generate a FICO score if you don't have one because they simply said, well, you've got to meet the minimum requirements for having a FICO score, and then you can use Experian Boost. This is a little more clear if we go to the frequently asked questions tied to the Smart Money debit card page. The last frequently asked question reads, can my digital checking account affect my credit scores? The answer is, bills you pay with your Experian Smart Money digital checking account could actually help raise your credit scores. Your account is automatically connected to Experian Boost, which could help you get credit for some of the bills you already pay. Could being the key word. Lastly, otherwise, opening a checking account generally has no impact on your credit scores. Purchases made through your account and the amount of money in it also don't affect your scores. Okay, so what have we learned? The Smart Money debit card is simply a debit card being marketed with a bank that is partnering with Experian to give you something that automatically gives them your spending information, your personal information tied to money that doesn't need to be reported to them. It's something that TransUnion must have found very valuable to work with Susie Orman when it came to her approved card, all of your personal spending patterns. If they are getting it without friction through a card that's automatically tied to Experian Boost, then they can get that information more easily. My guess is the process currently to sign up for Experian Boost involves so much friction that not enough people are getting into it in order for them to accumulate the valuable information that they want to have on record about you. And your personal information, your patterns are valuable to advertisers. I want you to know that. I'm not saying right now that Experian is selling your information here, but that's what they are in the business of doing, is selling copies of your credit report and validating your credit score for people who want to sell you debt products. That's what a lender is, right? So they're just collecting more information on you that can be sold. The key word there is it can be sold, even if their terms and conditions were to say, I haven't read through them all, even if it were to say that they can't sell that information, the disclaimer says that the terms and conditions are subject to change. So they can potentially, if they don't already, change them to sell your personal information. That's not something I want to engage with at all. And when it comes to my credit score, I'm not trying to get it up there because I think that it's a measure of my financial success. The only reason that I would really care a lot about my credit score is going to be A, getting a mortgage and getting a good rate on that mortgage, and then B, getting my premiums down on insurance. If I have a mortgage, I'm going to have a credit score anyway, so I might as well take good care of it. I don't personally use credit cards, and my credit score is still okay with just the history of my mortgages on there. And if most mortgage lenders are not going to be using Experian Boost credit scores, then why do I care about selling my personal information and all of my transaction history that could be you know, lost in a data breach if a major credit bureau gets hacked again, because that's happened before, right? If, if I give them all that information, all that valuable information, just to boost my score 
on a version that isn't going to be applied to a mortgage, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. At the very least, we didn't discover that this particular card is as problematic as the approved card was, according to the documentary in the story. But you, listening to this now, need to be skeptical when you see the advertisements with Travis Kelsey saying you can build credit without the debt. Because what we see here is something that is collecting your personal information for very little usable gain if you're following the Hopefield Financial Footsteps. If there's any gain to be had at all, I'm not going to be working with this. With that, what did you take away from today's episode? Did you learn anything? Are you going to be more aware as a consumer when it comes to the way that FICO scores are advertised, especially when it comes to building FICO scores or credit scores without a debt product? What do you think of the whole situation with Susie Orman? And do you get as fired up about these ads with Travis Kelsey as I did? Let me know in the comments below. And until next week, until next Tuesday, budget bravely and enjoy your hope-filled financial future. 